Hi everyone and welcome to example number three in our show that series. Right. So what we're doing in this series is we're looking at how to answer questions that have the instruction show that. Right. And the reason why I'm doing this is because um, questions that have the instruction show that right, have been found to be one of the most poorly answered questions in the math exam and also it is one of the questions that is most skipped right by learners. Okay. So in the previous two examples, we moved from looking at how to show that a line with a given equation is actually tangent to a circle. And then we moved on to looking at how to show that a given quadratic right, will have non-real roots for a given solution set right, or a particular solution set, which just simply just involved determining the nature of roots of that given quadratic. Okay. Now we're going to move on to another different example, right? And in this example, we are just required to find the general term of a given sequence, right? So, so far in this series, I've given you two real steps that you can use in order to successfully answer show that type questions, right? And the first little tip that I gave you is to try to rephrase the question, right? So instead of using the instruction show that, right? Try to rephrase the question into a question. Right? And then also another little tip that I gave you is to try to identify what calculation do you have to go through right, in order to obtain this result that they want you to obtain. Right? So in example number three, right, we are given a specific sequence. Right? And we are asked to show that the general term of the sequence right, is going to be given by this equation. Okay, so the equation tn is equals to 4n squared plus 4 root 3n plus 3. Okay, so we know that at the end of the day we need to end up with this equation as our result in order for us to say that we have been successful in answering this question. Right, so moving away from that we now need to think, okay, how do we find the general term of a given sequence? Right? That is going to be dependent on whether that sequence is it arithmetic, right, geometric, or quadratic. Okay. Now, usually we would go through all the little tests that we do right in order to determine whether it's arithmetic geometric or a quadratic right but over here you can use a little bit of a trick right because the tn formula that they want you to show already is 4n squared right so you can immediately eliminate these two types of sequences and immediately go to um, concluding that this sequence is quadratic right and what you are basically asked to do is indirectly to find the general term of the sequence, right? So that's not a difficult task to do. So what is the difficult element in this question, right? The only really difficult thing, right, and that is going to depend from person to person, right, is that what the examiner has done over here, right, is that they've chosen a, it's called a number sense, right? So they've chosen the type of numbers that they know that um, some students, right, not all students, some students will struggle with, okay. So chances are when they've looked at the trends in um, the answers in your exam questions, right, they've seen that most of you are able to find the general term, right, of a quadratic sequence quite successfully, right. But a lot of you, right, or some of you, right, struggle to deal with any sort of uh, number sense that is involving certs, right? So what they're doing now is using that thing, right, that element that you're struggling with, right, and using it within something else that you perform quite well in, right? So if we look at the terms of the sequence, we see that these terms are certs, right? So if you are not comfortable working with certs, right, that is what is going to make this question difficult for you, right, when it's actually not a difficult question at all, right. 
So if you are that type of student that actually struggles to work with thirds, what I would suggest that you, after watching this video, you go and you recap right, all the operations that we can do with thirds right, and start getting comfortable with working with thirds. All right. So in this video, what we're now going to do right, is just simply determine okay, the equation of this sequence. Right. So if we just rewrite it quickly, we have 7 plus 4 root 3. Right. Now notice that all of this is one single number. Right. This is what we call a third. Right. And even if you didn't know that, these little colons over here guide you to see the separation between term 1, term 2, term 3, and term 4. Okay. The next term is going to be 19 plus 8 root 3. Then we have 39 plus 12 root 3. And then 67 plus 16 root 3. Okay. So now that we've identified that what we are dealing with here is a quadratic sequence, we know that we have to um, evaluate Firstly, the first difference okay, between all of our terms. And then we are expecting the second difference to be constant. Right. So how do you evaluate a difference? Right. You take your second term minus the previous one. Right. So now, because we are working with thirds, right, you need to remember that in order to um, subtract thirds, right, you need to be dealing with like thirds, right? And in our case over here, we are lucky enough that we are dealing with like thirds, right? Because both of them, or all of them, in fact, are in terms of this root 3. Okay? So you can just deal with the number part separately and then the third part separately. Okay? So the first thing you're going to have is 19, right, minus 7, which is going to give you 12. Okay, and then you're going to have 8 root 3s minus 4 root 3s, which is still 4, sorry, positive, 4 root 3s. Okay, now we do this, the same thing for this um, part over here. Right? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with the numbers, so 39 minus 19, okay, so that's going to give us 20. Okay, so we have 20, and then we have 12 root 3s, right? And then we are subtracting from that 8 root 3s, which is giving us a positive 4 root 3. Okay, last part, right? Again, we need to start with the numbers. 67 minus 39 gives us 28. All right, so that's the number part. And then we have 16 root 3s minus 12 root 3s, which still gives us 4 root 3s. Okay. So plus 4 root 3s. Okay. Now we know that we can't stop over here. We need to move on to our second difference. Right. So when we look at the second difference, 20 minus 12 is 8. And 4 root 3 minus 4 root 3 will be 0. Okay. Again over here, 28 minus 20 is also 8. Right? And 4 root 3 minus 4 root 3 is 0. Right? So we have this expected result right, where we have a constant Okay, second difference, right? And because we have that constant second difference, it also confirms to us that um, this sequence is quadratic. Okay, so we're going to move that to the side a little bit, right? And we know that now we need to focus on three different elements of this um, sequence, right? The first one is going to be um, this first term. Okay, so the first term, and then we need to focus on 
the first term of the first difference, right? So here is the first difference, this line over here, and we just need to focus on the first term, right? And of course, we need to focus on the um, second difference as well, right? So there's three different equations that you need to remember, right? The easiest one to remember is that twice, okay, A is going to be equals to the second difference, which in this case is 8. Then the next equation is 3a plus b. That must equal the first term of the first difference, which is going to be this number here in the green box. So that's going to be 12 plus 4 root 3. Okay. Then we have one last equation, and I'm just going to write it over here. We're going to have a plus b plus c, right, is equals to the first term of our given sequence, which is the 7 plus 4 root 3. Okay. And if you're wondering where these a, b, and c values come from, right, they still link back to the a, b, and c value, right, in our general formula, ax squared plus bx plus c, right. Now, if we these a, b, and c values that we are going to calculate link to these a, b, and c values, then it means that we already know that a must become a value of 4, otherwise we are wrong. b must be a value of 4 root 3, otherwise we are wrong. And c must be a value of 3. Okay. So that's the nice thing about the show that type questions, right? The answer is actually given to you, right? And you can use that answer, right, to guide yourself, right, not to make any um, mathematical errors while you are carrying out your calculations, right? So when you solve this first equation, you can see that immediately A works out to be 4, right? That is a very nice result, okay, because that checks with what we have over here. Right, now we're going to take this a value and we're going to substitute it into the second equation. Right, so when we do that, we're going to have 3 times 4, which is going to be 12. We're going to go straight into that step. And we're going to have plus b is equal to 12 plus 4 root 3. Right, now you can see that if we subtract 12 from both sides, right, then we're just going to have b is equal to 4 root 3. Also a good result because you can see it right over there. Okay. Lastly, we're now going to take these two values and substitute them into the last equation that we have. Okay. So, when we do that, we now know that A is 4, right? B is 4 root 3, okay? We now want to work out what is C. And this is all equals to 7 plus 4 root 3. Okay, so let's take it step by step. We're going to have C is equals to 7 plus 4 root 3. Okay, then we're going to subtract 4. Then we're going to subtract 4 root 3. Okay, now when you look at this, you can see that the 4 root 3s cancel each other out. So right? you have plus 4 root 3 and minus 4 root 3. Right, now you're just left with these numbers, right, or constant terms. Right? So 7 minus 4 is a value of 3, and that is equal to C, right. That's very good because we can see it right over there, right. So what is the problem with leaving your solution like this? Well, leaving your solution like this is called leaving your solution in mid A. Right. And that means that you are now expecting the marker right, to make the conclusion for you okay, that all of these results right, somehow connect to what they wanted you to show. Right. So don't do that because now you're going to make yourself lose an unnecessary mark. Okay? Okay? And if you want to make this technical, you can state it like this right, and say that since... For quadratic sequence, Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C, right? Therefore, 
Cn is equals to, well, you're now just basically substituting that. So that's a, that's 4, n squared plus b, 4 over 3n plus c, which is 3. Fine. And so you've thus successfully shown what was required from you. Okay. So that's it for today's video, Matriculants. I hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time.